Where has sugar? Makes me like that. Who knows? How slow is my laptop today? Amtrak and Southern Pacific Rail fan. You made it again, and this time you were first for sure. You got in there. North American trains. Top of my head's missing. Like normal, I guess. Never use all my head, just from here down, I guess. Mr. John Dilly. Red Burn Tony, how are you doing? You look like you were pretty hot in the uh, shed today, I'll tell you that much. Look, look pretty warm where you were. Trying to do that live stream of yours? Well, you did it, so not trying. Hastings BNSF N Scale Modeler. Hello, all, and glad to be here. I'm glad to be here too, you know that? Gets me out of work about a half hour early, just because he knows my boss knows I do this, so he's like kind of good to me that way, so. Ethanville Bro 420, happy fourth from the U.S. Well, that takes one of my points away if I say that right now. See, I'm doing notes so we can stay on topic. Happy fourth of July. That was the second thing on my list, not the first. So you got to wait, but you guys can all say it anyway. So Independence Day. Ron Pisco, hi, Sparky. Hi, Ron. How are you doing? And speaking of Ron Pisco that's here. He has a video up of Steamtown if people are going. And I'll touch on this a little bit later, but if anybody is going, head over to Ron Pistol's channel. Look at that video and uh, let us know. Let Ron know that you're coming. And Thursday, which I guess is tomorrow, I'm going to go take a look at that video, do a head count. So if you got people and friends and family coming, let me know that too if you can. And then Friday, I'm going to call Steamtown and try to let them know roughly how many people are going to be showing up just to see if I can maybe squeak a deal out of them. Or they have the excursion train that's going from 11 to 3, I think. So I think it's 35 bucks. See if I can get that jude down a little bit. And uh, if anybody knows a good hotel there that overlooks the tracks, in like we're looking for one. So, and as I, I mentioned it last week I think it was the Radisson that we were looking at and it looks like an old train station and when she first looked up July 14th it was 340 bucks and she's in the states somewhere right now so I'm not sure if that makes a difference or not but she looked it up again I think it was about 130 for July 14th so that's just an idea of a place but if anybody knows another place to stay that's nice and overlooks the tracks. Let me know in the chat in, uh, in an hour when I go back and well, a couple hours when I go back and check this out. Maybe I'll know where we can stay. Southern 207 Hobbies is saying hi. We got Railfan 555. Nancy Jones is in the house. Not watching trains tonight. You got to do some more videos of your rail fan. Because I like when you see Canadian stuff down there, you just get all happy and excited. The rail cars, they travel everywhere, so. Nicholas is in. G'day, sir. How are you doing? Bet you she's hot down around you guys. Oh, boy. So, EJ and E. Jeff. Hi, Sparky. Hello, Jeff. How are you? And saw your contest. and It was concluded the other day. And what was it? RWC Cars won that. So, congratulations for him. That's kind of cool. I think you had a couple other ones too. So, so we got Trash Man two hundred eight. Hey, hey, hey! And that's obviously saying hi, hi, hi. Not feed you full of hay. Smoke Sparky. Yeah, I just seen that. It's kind of cool how it goes across the screen like that. Wasn't quite ready to start the stream when I did. I get right in this list and stuff like that, and all of a sudden I looked up. Is the phone that has to ring sometime during this hour. It rings every time I do the live stream. And I looked up at it, and it's 6.52, and I'm like, oh, my God. I had nothing set up on the desk. I just had the desk here. It's like, oh, boy, here we go. So 
It's 97 here. It's about that here today, too. So what do we got? We got 33, 34 degrees. So what is that? Multiply it by 2. So say 66 and then add 30. So now we're at 96. So I was close. That's kind of a, quote, rough estimate. Don't take my uh, word for it. So John's saying hi. Nicholas is saying hi. 97. Out feels like 104. See, reading temperatures like that just makes me miss Phoenix and Arizona and, and all that. Because I do like the heat. I just, I don't know. I'd rather be hot than cold, for sure. You can always take clothes off, but you can only put so many on. So the only bad part about having temperatures near the 100 mark is this is the last room of my igloo that I have left. The rest of my house is all melted, so now i got to wait for winter. I'm going to build it bigger next year, though. I'm going to have lots of rooms, maybe a full basement in it. See how that works. Yeah, it's usually humid up here, too, BNSF 1982. Crooked River and Eastern Railroad. Hey, guys, happy 4th of July. Uh, I'm going to stroke that one off my list, so happy 4th of July. Oh, goody, my other computer's trying to do something. Hopefully it doesn't do it too soon. Wait an hour. Henry Lewis. See, I don't even have that ready, John. Here we go. Hey, everybody ready? If you got earphones in, when you see this come out, it's time to take the head. Earphones out. Boom. Pop them out. Ready? John Dilly saying happy 4th of July to everybody. <laughs> I always like the little missile one too for the first one. So, Mr. John Daly, thank you very much, sir, for saying happy 4th of July. Happy 4th, right back to you. I hope you guys have a really good night tonight. I'm pretty sure you guys do just like Canada does. You got all your fireworks and stuff in there and your displays after dark and backyard barbecues and fun fests and maybe a little bit of drinking maybe a little bit of drinking if you're driving don't drink and drive it's the best thing i got got to say for you and that's coming from somebody that melts foam with a torch to make a river and a pond but hey still don't do it everybody knows you don't drink and drive so thank you very much john that's awesome i seen az train granny flip through there when i was doing that so, hello, my dear. How was your uh, dinner last night with Container Man? Red Lobster sounded really good. Once, once you said that, it's like, oh, I missed the Red Lobster. Because you can buy, I don't know if you can do it down there, but here you can get the Rock Lobster and this little baby lobster thing, tails, and then the ring of shrimp on the side of it, too. And it's, it's about 40 bucks. But, oh, man, is it good? You dip it in the butter. So, enough about food until Eric gets here. So... James Snyder, what's up, Sparky? Um, not a lot. Just sitting here chilling out with you guys. Actually, I do have a couple things. So, And I was getting stuffed up again. So I guess everybody's got to be used to be sniffing by now. Anything goes good with margaritas. Well, I that's true. And the picture Ron sent me, that thing was like that big around. And good weather for that kind of stuff, too. Nice and cold. Ronald Pistol, how are you doing, buddy? You know, GRE, GRE 2057. G'day, sir. How are you doing? You probably said hi to me up there somewhere. I always miss it. So it's cooled down a chilly 88 in Cleveland. So there's a destination spot for everybody. Head for Cleveland if you need cooler weather. Went to the CSX Howl Yard today. Did you get some good footage and put it up on your channel? So I always like watching the yard. Yard works. I was in London a couple weeks ago. No, it was about a month ago, I guess. But I pull under this bridge. And I lived in London, I bet you, 12 years. Okay? I walked over this bridge all the time. But obviously, I wasn't in the trains back then because I just never noticed the train yard underneath it. So this time... Sparky, call me Jesse. Okay, I'll touch on that in a minute, Jesse. So this time when I come up to the bridge, all of a sudden I see a train there, and I'm like, oh, wow, there's tracks here. And then I pull in, and it's a huge yard, a CP rail. The first sign you see is no trespassing, of course. So 
I drive past that sign and it's got a little, I don't know, donut thing that you can drive around in. Because obviously if you pull in, you got to pull out now. So I drove halfway around and I got out. The next sign you see is caution, remote control locomotives used in this yard. And I thought, you got to be kidding me. So I sit there and I'm watching. There's a guy on the other side of the yard. He's got this big black box hanging off his chest. And he's got a couple dials and stuff on it. And he's just flipping away. And that train's going back and forth. And it's a, it's a regular GP38 that he was moving back and forth. So somehow they put radio control in it. So I don't know if they come like that when you order them. Well, when we order them, when they order them. Or if there's just something they put inside that actually starts. It's like cruise control for your car, but it was for a train. So I thought that was kind of cool. So Now, on this calling you Jesse, the thing I like to do about my channel, and, and I know Vinny wants everybody else's names, real names, so he can call everybody by your real name. I, myself, when I'm watching Vinny, and he says, okay, Bob, thanks very much, and I'm looking at the chat, and there's nobody named Bob. Amtrak and Southern Pacific Rail fan. Thank you, sir. Anybody see this yet? See it? This is just in case Jack Jack pops in because he yells at me every time I... Hit the button and I don't tell you guys it's coming. So Amtrak and Southern Pacific Rail fan. And I do have a question for you, sir. Are you going to be doing another live stream? Come up soon. Just throw it up in the chat. I'll probably miss your answer, but I'll watch it later. But everybody else will see it. Because Amtrak and Southern Pacific Rail fan did his uh, first scheduled live stream last week. And I think we ended up with 12 people tops in it. I think we could do a little bit better than that if he does another one. So, But it was kind of cool. So Pippin Junction's here. Hello, Sparky. Hope things are good. They're doing really good. Like I said, it's, it's almost 100 degrees here at Fahrenheit. It's just 34, 33 Celsius. I love the heat. So maybe I should just move to Arizona. Maybe I should do that. But I'd probably lose my wife on that one. So anyway, sorry. Back to the Jesse and the... Uh, the name calling thing. Um, like I said, Vinny likes to call everybody by their real names. And to me, when you look at the chat, it's, and I'm going to use AZ Train Granny also as an example here. I'm like, Diana, how was your dinner at Red Lobster with Roy? Okay, now you guys are going to look at the chat and go, A, who's Diana? B, who's Roy? And why did they go to Red Lobster? Were they on a date? So I like to use AZ Train Granny was out with Container Man 68 because they met up in Phoenix and they went out and had a better dinner together before he went over and played trains at Vinny's place. So that's just the whole thing behind why I like to use everybody's name that comes up on the screen. So yes, you were going to say, call me Jesse. And I don't mean to be mean or anything about it, but it kind of goes zoop, right over my head because... I'd just rather call you by your screen name so other people can look at you and go, hey, Sparky just mentioned that guy. I should go check him out. So you guys should go check those people out. I'll sit here in silence and wait. How's that? Dum, 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 do, do, dum. Mobus Yard uses remote control switchers. I think a lot of the yards do nowadays. So Look at that. I write all this stuff down. I'm not even on topic. Not even close. Didn't even hit the first thing on my list. Bye. So I think I've said hi to everybody. If I didn't, hi. How are you? We've got, I can't see how many other people I've got. What did I do to this thing? Oh, dear. Oh, well, whatever. I'll see that. Oh, 21. They've changed that around now, too. Wish YouTube would stop screwing around with stuff. Now how many people are watching is way over there. And there's only 22 people watching. I thought there'd be like 50. Uh, I'm sad now. Seven thumbs up. That's all right. We'll get there. Maybe by the end of it, we'll have eight or nine. So. Uh, Terrell Times here. Good day. So, yeah, I think, I think pretty much I got everybody. Doing one Saturday at 1 p.m. Pacific Central Time. At my train club. Hey, that'll be a cool one. Does model trains 
people like watching that stuff run around. So, so everybody check out Amtrak and Southern Pacific Rail Fan. And this Saturday, we can go check out his club's layout. So that would be cool. So first thing I wanted to hit on my list, so I can stroke this off and get back to a bit of this chat, is I'm going to have a backyard barbecue for anybody in the Cambridge area. That's Cambridge, Ontario. Not in the UK. Sorry, guys. So Cambridge, Ontario, July 28th. It's going to be from 11 o'clock in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. You're going to kind of get to know because i got a big back gate that you can drive a car through. I'm going to open half of that. I'm right on the corner. Still not going to tell you my address yet. But if you really want to know where it is, I'm pretty sure I've got it in about three or four videos already. So just go back and watch some of my old stuff. Hi, Cheryl Crow. How are you doing? And we got Air Max 1. Look at that. I can read your name this time after you like spelled it out for me. That was bad, eh? Air Max 1. And I look A-I-R-M. Yeah, sometimes I'm just not on the ball. So, so yeah, Backyard Barbecue, July 28th. And I'm not going to ask who's coming yet and try to get a tally because obviously I'll have to send the wife to Costco and buy some sausage and hot dogs and buns and hamburgers and salads and stuff like that. So it would be nice. You can say right now if you want to come or not if you want to come, if you're planning on coming. Like I said, it's Cambridge, Ontario, 11 o'clock in the morning till 5 in the afternoon, July 28th. I'd love to meet anybody and everybody that's in the area. So book your flights now. Probably have to pay for them now. Fly into Toronto, take a cab here, take a Uber back to Toronto, and then fly home. There's not too many people we can actually pitch tents in my backyard. But barbecue still open if we're closed at five or over at five. So I'll probably be in the house enjoying like air conditioning or something. So there we go, backyard barbecue done. Happy Fourth of July! Woo! -hoo! There, done. Just we've already said all that quite a bit. So. I'm okay. I met Vinny and Roy. Really? Are they there today? That's like awesome. Did you get some video? And you don't put up videos on your channel. That is one question I do have for you, Cheryl. Or anybody else that's in here right now that doesn't put up videos on your channel. Why? It's You can answer it if you want. You don't have to. But like I said, that's to anybody that doesn't put up videos. Just why? If you got a cell phone, you can put up videos. You just have to download the uh, YouTube creator studio and bang you're up and running so but not a big deal but i'm sure roy or vinnie probably got some video of you so dave atkins hey hi sparky hey dave how are you doing did i mention ron pistols here and he's got a video about steamtown so check it out answer the question if you're coming so yeah now i see redbird tony in here He's gone a little quiet, so maybe he's still working on his layout there. But, woohoo, YouTube just let me know you're live, Sparky. Well, they didn't let me know, and I almost was late. So, yeah, I blame YouTube, YouTube for that, too. Shadow Wolf, how are you doing, sir? Already ate, but yeah, drinking. Drinking's good. Cooked up a couple ribeyes. Nice. Can't complain at food. Really can't, especially steaks. Oh, oh. So back to Redbird Tony. There he is right there. I am here. Redbird Tony did his first live stream. I'm pretty sure it was today, about five hours ago. And I got home. Of course, I clicked on it. And I'm watching it. And right off the bat, first thing I'm going to say to you is, oh, my God, was it hot in your shed or what? I'm pretty, I don't know if it was that your shed or your garage. So, but, yeah, you looked really hot. Like, not hot as in sexy, but wow, looked warm. How's that? He might have been sexy, too. I don't know. I, other people are watching. So, hey! But I thought that was really cool. And I was at work today. I work 410, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. There are my scheduled days at work, and I'm off at 530. Gets me home at 630. So, sorry, I missed it. But would have been cool to actually pop into your live stream and say hi, but as I work, just can't do stuff like that when I'm at work unless I'm on break. So, but hopefully someday you schedule one that I can get in on and, and talk your ear off a little bit. 
it looked like you had a good group come in. So what did you top out at, like 12, 13 people in your stream, or was there more? Basement, it was hot. Was working on the layout and going up and down the stairs. That was your basement, you were that hot? Holy cow. That warm? Okay. <laughs> so very cool Amtrak in Southern Pacific. So I missed something. Oh, my club has an HO and N scale layout in Old Southern Pacific. Observation car restoring. That's cool. So it's a really cool club. Yeah, it would be. Hey, my phone's ringing. I turned it down, though. Notice that? You guys might not even be able to hear that. So, one, eight, seven, seven, six, two, four, one, four, three, zero. See, that's if you guys couldn't hear it. <coughs> so, check out Redbird Tony. Go subscribe to him. If you like his stuff, hit the bell. And next time he does a live stream, you won't miss it. And hopefully, I'm not at work. Like I said, so, but yeah, the one thing you did mention about me there is I'm probably sitting on my back deck enjoying a beer or something, and, well, I wish that was the case. Even a Dr. Pepper would have been okay, I guess, but my wife's addicted to the Dr. Pepper. I just find that stuff really, I'm not a pop drinker, so the Dr. Pepper to me is very sweet. So there's a red bird, Tony, and stroke you off my list. Done with you. Sounded better to me. What did? Oh, the Dr. Pepper sounded better to me. Stroked the whole thing off my list and we're doing good. So it ain't me, it ain't me. I don't often call. Well, it was an 877 number, so. Yeah, Dr. Pepper for the win. Eh, Jack Daniels. Eh, man. Nothing harder than beer hits my lips. So next thing to shout out, I think I already did the part of this, but Mr. Vinny, BNSF 6951, he does his live shows on Fridays, 8 p.m. Eastern, scratch building, talking, chatting, pretty much something about what I got. He just calls you by your real name, not your YouTube name. But good thing to check out. And uh, I don't know, every time that I seem to pop into – his live stream, there's always one or two people there that I don't recognize and get to go and subscribe to them. That's that's the basic reason why we're all here, right? Is to get to meet people and check out their channels. Some people might even find out that they live next door to each other and uh, can become really good friends. So that's pretty much that. Shadow Wolf talking about vodka. Now, this was in Ron Perry's channel, so not a lot of drinking going on on this channel. Because I raised a cup. Apple juice, I promise. I haven't seen Vinny on yet, so. Oh, if he's on on Fridays? He's always on on Fridays, unless he misses something. Cheryl Crow, she'd have to give us a rundown on Vinny now that she's met the guy, so she probably knows all about him and what he's doing for the next month. My live stream is Saturday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'll get better with these time zone things, I'm sure. Apple pie moonshine. How did you guys get stuck on booze? Redbird Tony, that's your fault. You mentioned it in your stream. You started this. So, now, in my last live stream, I did mention that I was going to build one of these ground throws that you do with your hands from Caboose Industries. And I did one during the week, put it all together. And I don't think there's any real way. Well, there's a way. I could just do it, right? But. That's the package it comes in. You can buy different ones. This is just the switch stand itself. But you can buy ones that have, I'll try to get these up a little bit closer. Without my big fat fingers in there. And maybe a white piece of paper behind it. Hey, you can see it. So I got this one all together and it's got a lot, a lot, a lot of small, small parts. 
as we can see here, I'll just see if I can hold that up. Oh, hey, this one's actually open. See in the bottom of that bag how small that little piece is right there? That little itty bitty black piece, which just fell out and is right there on my finger right now. And by the way, I'm sorry, I'm not watching the chat right now. So free for all because I think I've only got my one moderator in here. So you better not leave, Nicholas. You're on full-time duty. So I get this thing all together. And like I said, all the parts are so small. There's no sense in me doing it on a live stream. But I do have a question for you guys if you've done one of these. Now, like I said, you can, you can buy them like that. And that's just the normal everyday switch that you do with your fingers. Smart old me, I took this out. Oh, I actually got it right back in the hole too. So do that. And this one here, if you turn it, the switch, throw it, bang, like that. But, yeah, this is the question I got for you guys. If any of you guys have built the ones with these little stands on them, is what holds this piece in? Because as soon as you move that with your finger, <coughs> just like I just did, but you move it with your finger, and it wants to pop out and jump around and go away on you and all that other stuff, so... There's got to be something that keeps that in there. Now, this little piece that fell out kind of looks like it, well, it does. It goes around that little bar right there. Whee, see? But it's only got a hole on one side of it. Well, there it is. Woohoo! You stick to your fingers. Just like my money runs away. Yeah, it's only got a hole on the top. There's not a hole in the bottom. So that's not actually meant to hold that still so I can't find anything in there and I don't want to glue it because once you glue it it's not gonna turn then right this is camera might be all right for this if I can do that no not really maybe you guys see the little gears on the end of that kind of see it that way I don't know how close I can get before you can't see anything no, yes. Anyway, there's little gears on the end of that, so it has to be free moving. It has to spin, so you can't glue the rod down in the base. You can't glue that down on the turn piece, because then it's not going to turn. And the only piece I did glue was this top piece, and hopefully I can get that off if it's pointed the wrong direction. So, hey, like I said, I can't really build one of these on camera because it's just way too small. And I don't really need to be chasing parts all over. Which would be kind of funny, though. I'd be all over the floor looking for a little piece just like that. Yeah, right. Not. That's gone. But these Caboose Industries ground throws are good for any kind of that you got. So that's the Atlas. And what is it here? Of course, I can't read this now. Where's the other one? This one's a little better. It opens up. Da, 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 da. Nope. 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 Anyway, somewhere on here it tells you all the switches it does. You think I would have highlighted that beforehand? That way I just look and go, there it is. But yeah, you got Atlas, Narahara, if I can pronounce that right. But that's what this other piece is here. As you can see off the side, so it does actually fit into your turnouts and the different little configurations they got. So once I figure out this actual flag thing, and like I said, I wasn't watching the chat, so hopefully somebody told me how to fix that and do it properly, and I'll see it later. How do I get this back in this bag? Just like that. Look at that. I didn't lose that little piece. I'm impressed. But yeah, my whole layout, except for my mining area, because I can't reach that. So that's all. I think I've got five five tortoises up there, and I can switch all those with my NCE system. But the rest of my layout is all going to be these things. Because I just want it. I think this is more realistic. Like if you're running trains around the yard and stuff like that, the guy's got to get out and flip the switch in the yard. It's just not, boom, done. So... Dang, you gotta flip the switch. 
and then you get the little signal thing there that indicates which switch is going to and what. But yeah, I want a bunch of these. I think right now I got seven of them. All, of course, with this that I can't figure out how to do. So, James Snyder, g'day, how are you? Track 10 trains. Hey, Sparky, I just want to say that I want to thank you so much for helping my channel get to 100 subscribers. Without these live streams, that would never have happened. Well, you are welcome very much, Track 10 Trains. And we've got 35 people in here right now. I'm all hunched over trying to stay on this camera. But take a minute or a second right now. Go check them out. Let's get them to 115. Why not? Track 10 trains. But you are welcome. And yes, that's what the live streams are for. Everybody check out everybody's channels. Subscribe. We'll all be best of friends. Or good acquaintances anyway for the most part. But heavy Canadian equipment. Saw your bus video. I think you posted that a little bit, bit ago. But <laughs> all I can see is the you're panning and the bus drives by and this dog runs out in front of it. I'm like, oh my god, really? But I've seen a few dogs like that. They're, they're tire biters. I don't know what it is. They go out and they got to try to bite the tire. If a dog ever actually bit into a tire, it would be doing this down the road all the time. Blah, blah, blah. Or lose a tooth, one or the other. So I'm more of a cat person. Probably for a little bit of that reason, I guess. Cats don't chase tires. My cat doesn't chase mice though either, so... You're welcome. Southern 207s, I'm going to update the contest on my channel tonight. I'm currently at 96, aiming for 101 subs for the drawing. Well, we just hit contest. If you put that off my list, you guys are, did you guys actually read this when I was holding it up before? Like, holy cow. But yeah, if anybody knows anything about those switch stands and stuff, you can help me out. And not only by helping me out, next week I can bring it bring that thing back out and uh, tell what the answer is to that problem and then it's solved for everybody not just me because I'm sure if I'm having that problem somebody else has got to have that problem too so okay we're just flying right through this list great let's take a break no all right so I mentioned Ron Pisco before so that brings me to my trip to Steamtown who is coming to that? So far, I think I had a list. What did I do with the list? It's on the next page. So Steamtown, Scranton, Pennsylvania, July 14th. So we're only 10 days away. It's on a Saturday. I'm going down on the Friday. Like I said, I'm not sure where we're going to stay yet. So I know I've had a couple of people ask me about hotels and stuff like that. Biggest thing for us when we need a hotel is the little girl's got to have a pool. So, so Steam Town, we got BNSF1982 has said he's coming. I think I've seen you in the chat. I did say hi. So, if you're still here, say hi again, and you're coming to Steam Town. So, Sparky, what's the gondola project? We're getting there. That's some of like second last on my list. Ethanville Bro 420. Making plans to come. Um, I think he has confirmed with Ron Pistol that he is. But I'm not completely sure. I'm going to check out Ron's video tomorrow. And uh, see who's all on there. So we got Crooked River and Eastern Railroad. And Pink Monte. And Ron Pistol And family. JP Videos. And myself. And my family. So, so far we've got one, two, three, four, five. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 people. That's not bad. So, Steamtown in Scranton, Pennsylvania, July 14th. I'm going to hit the parking lot at 8.30 in the morning, open up my big trunk, and start selling coffee cups for 50 bucks each. Or donations. I like the 50 bucks part, but donations are good too. But I will be bringing my coffee cups, my mouse pads, and stickers. And, wow, that kind of takes me off of that part of the list. Okay, that's the Steamtown trip. They do have an excursion train that day. It's from 11 o'clock to 3.30. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do that. 
And I'm kind of leading more towards the trolley exhibit, which is across the street. And I think it's five bucks. And you can take that for an hour down the tracks, goes through a long tunnel. It's a mile long. But that's what I'm leaning towards. I think that'd be a little more fun than the excursion myself. The excursion, I think, is $35. Uh, caboose hops, which is riding in cars and stuff through the yard. So cabooses and passenger cars, and I believe they just pull you through the yard to one end and then back. And that's got a small price tag of five bucks on it too, I think. Shop tours, and then they've got the big boy, Elko's, all kinds of stuff. The one thing I am going to suggest, guys, is don't go to the Steamtown website to look if you're interested in going. Because I did that, and watching or looking at their website, I probably wouldn't go. There's not a lot on it. But even JP Videos, he does, I think he's got two or three videos about Steamtown. And they're about a half hour long where he's walking around. And one of his videos, he does do the trolley ride. So anyway, to make a long story short, too late, I know. Go watch videos of Steamtown, and then find out if you're going to like it or not. Now... My first reason for going down there was just to take the family, and it was a weekend away from here. But now I'm getting to meet quite a few people, so I'm getting kind of, I'm getting very excited actually to meet you guys and gals. If there's going to be gals coming and uh, hanging out for a little bit, don't feel obligated that you have to hang out with me the whole day because I'll probably tell you to go away after about three hours. Just kidding, of course, but. It's, it's a meet and greet at 8.30 to 9 o'clock. It's at Steamtown in Scrap, Pennsylvania. If we all walk around with each other for a little bit, that's great. If you guys go your own way and we bump into each other later, that's great. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do the trolley thing. So, like I said, don't feel obligated that you got to stay. We're not going as a group. We're just meeting in the parking lot as a group. So and I'm going to call them on Friday if I can get better prices for something or a couple things or something else to be shown or ran or something. I don't know. I'm just going to call and say, listen, I've got this many people coming. What do you guys got going on? And can you guys, what I'd really like to ask them though, is if they can open up some of their locomotives because a couple of the videos you see people and they're walking by and there's signs and chains across the steps. Do not climb on it. Well, what good is that? Take the signs down. Let us in the cabs. It's not like they're going to go anywhere. I'd like a couple cab shots. That would be awesome. Especially the big boy. I would love to get inside that big boy and just see what that whole area was like, how big it was. Like, the big boy's massive. That cab's got to be pretty big, too. So, anyway, enough with Steve Town. That's gone. Please go to Ron Pistol's channel. That's gone. I've said that, like, a couple times. Say if you're coming, I will be calling them, said that. Probably did all this. 8.30, watch the trains. Yep, yep, yep. So, I have mentioned a contest that I'm going to have. Every once in a while, I do look at the channel. Ron Piskel, is there a peach festival going on that weekend? <laughs> That'd be good, actually. Peaches are nice when they're nice and ripe and juicy, and you take your bite, and it goes all over your face. It's just yummy. But anyway, trains are healthy. Yes, they are. I think so. Am I getting sidetracked? Mm. So I did mention a contest not that long ago. And we're not there yet because we've only got 34 people watching tonight. But NCE DCC system is what I'm going to try to give away. Well, I am going to give it away. Right? Comes with... Everything you see inside the box, I believe, it's got the power pack, pro cab, the part that hooks into the track, and two cords. It is their starter set. It even says that, complete DCC starter set. This is going to be the prize. This is what you can add to your starter set afterwards to make it bigger and better. So this is just a stepping stone if you want to stay with the NCE system. But anyway. Not selling this to you is I'm gonna give it to you guys. Conditions. My stream is where I'm gonna give it away. How I'm gonna do it is I need a hundred people in the stream. 
So feel free to throw shout outs on your videos and stuff and say, listen, guys, start checking out Sparky's live stream on Wednesdays. He's going to be doing a contest if he hits 100 people in the stream. So we do that a couple times. And, but the first time I hit over 100, and it stays over 100 people watching for a bit, then I'll probably get this out and we'll hold the contest. How the contest is going to go is Ron, which is Container Man 68, and Vinny, which is BNSF 6951. I am going to text them a number during the live stream. You guys can all watch me do it. I'll hold up my phone. You can't see. And I will text the two of them one number. There will be a number in between 1 and 150. And the first person in the chat that guesses the number wins this system. It's easy enough, right? The only other real rule is you got to leave about five seconds between your guesses. That way it gives other people a chance to get in there too and also gives us a bit of a chance to see the number go by. During the live stream, it will be an unofficial announcement about who won. Because Vinny or Container Man or myself will see that number go by the screen, see the name, and unofficially say that that person won. Eventually. I'll probably let that go for a few minutes, so just see how much we're having fun with it. It will not be an official winner for two hours after my live stream. Because two hours after my live stream is when I can go back on and I can watch it with the chat and it's not all screwing up and I can actually go through and see exactly who that person was that won. So just in case I miss it or there was a tie or something else. So but that's going to be my contest. we got to get 100 people into my stream. So that could be any time from next Wednesday to any Wednesday after that. As soon as my stream has 100 people in it, for a while, like I said, I can't just hit 100 minutes and I'll drop back down. We got a plateau over 100, stay there. Then I'll hold the contest. So obviously it's not this week, which is good because it's only 34 people. But that's going to be the contest. Any week that I do hit over 100 people watching my live stream will be the day of the contest. So that is completely up to you. I can only say it so many times. Everybody else puts a video out there that says go check out Wednesday's live stream chat. Maybe next week we'll have a contest. You never know. So that gets rid of that. Now I do have one question. Vinny is selling t-shirts on his channel and it's the Vinny did build structures or something. I'm getting one. Mr. John Dilly's getting a whole pile of them. I got one for everybody in his family. Ron Pistol, I think, is getting some. Sparky, you are too nice. That is one sweet prize. I think so, too. And thank you very much. Oh, so Vinny's doing the t-shirts and he's selling them. I have never once thought about selling my t-shirt. And then now Vinny's doing it. And I've had a couple people send me emails saying, when, are, when am I going to sell t-shirts, or am I selling them, or do I have any? And I'd have to do the same thing that Vinny's doing. I'd have to take an order and then find out prices for you guys and shipping and all that stuff. So if you can let me know in this chat right about now, do you think it's a good idea? I sell my t-shirts, and if you're kind of sort of want to be interested in one, let me know, and then I can officially... Do a t-shirt video. So uh, I did give a bunch of them away when I, I think that was a year and a half ago I got these shirts. Maybe a year ago. I did a bunch up and gave them to a bunch of people that helped me out during my flood. <coughs> but hey, if you guys want a Sparky shirt, and mine would be a little bit different too. On the back, uh, see if I can do it. This is how Derek Glass shows his off. Is it, is it there? Can you see it? I can't see you guys and I can't see the chat. Can you guys see the back of my shirt? Well, hopefully you can. But that's the back of my shirt. The front of my shirt, as seen on YouTube, I'd probably make a little bit bigger and bring it down a little bit. 
So it's over the tit, not on the chest. And the same with my name. I can keep that there, but bring it down a little bit to match this up. So that's up to you guys. Just throw it in the chat if you'd be interested. Like I said, I've never, I don't know, I've never seen myself as selling T-shirts. I thought I'd sell coffee mugs first, but <laughs> I ordered these things. You hold a coffee mug like this. So my logo, you think, would be there. I don't know how I'd order them, and they're on the end. But whatever. Is it backwards again? YouTube. It's backwards again. i got to look into that. So. So you asked about the gondola project. I just wanted to hold one up to show you what a gondola was. That was it. Pretty good, eh? I've got a piece of foam board. I've got... <laughs> can't see anything now. And now I've got a coffee cup. Hopefully it'll make too big of a mess. But I've got... This is aluminum. So... Next time you guys are driving past a hydro yard or something, you look in it, it's got this big round tubes that are going through the yard. That's aluminum bus. And we have to cut it to make it fit. So this cup has this much aluminum filings from a saw. So I was walking past the guy that does the bus work and he's the welder. And he's just got a mound of this stuff sitting there on the saw. And I'm like, can I have that? He's like, what the hell would you want that for? I said, because it would fit inside a gondola perfectly and I think it would make an awesome load so very shortly live I am going to try and make up an aluminum load for that gondola don't worry though I don't have a torch I've got a foam cutter might make this a little less smelly and safer so just plug in my last video there but so that's what's coming up shortly. Did the t-shirt thing, did the contest thing, gondola load that's going to be right after talking about going live. A lot of people now are doing exactly that. They're going live on their YouTube channels. So watching some of them, some are good, some are not so good. Others are just completely awful. And I'm not saying any names, so who cares, right? But couple things that I do notice about going live is a lot of people are using their phone to go live, right? Put the gondola over there. So when you go live on your phone, it's sitting like this. And the chat on it, it's, whoop. anyway, the chat when you're using your phone, and if you've gone live and you know this already and I say something that's wrong, please correct me. That's fine. Because I've only used my phone once or twice. But you're doing your video and the chat goes up the side. So you guys can see how fast my chat moves sometimes, right? So you're sitting there, you're doing your live stream and you're doing this. You're trying to read your chat because you forgot your glasses upstairs and you're in the basement playing with your trains. And the chat's just a flying by. So first thing I'm going to say, A, is plan your live streams. It's okay to all of a sudden just... Hey, I'm going live and do it. People will come. Don't, when you're doing your live stream, don't start, go five minutes. Nobody showed up and go, I'm done. Give it a few minutes. Give it 10 minutes. Let it run. But don't sit there and stare at your screen waiting for comments. Have something planned for what you're doing your live stream for. So build, building your layout, running trains, talking to yourself and reading a book, whatever, right? But just kind of have a sort of plan so... <laughs> like I said, I'm not singling anybody out. This is just stuff I've noticed through live stream watching. Because I do love watching live streams just as much as you guys do. I also subscribe to other people if I notice that I'm not subscribed. So it's a perfect way to do that. So the first thing I'm going to say is plan it. Have something planned to do. Schedule it. Let people know maybe about an hour before you go live. Just post a quick video. That's no more than 30 seconds long. Hey guys, it's Vinny. I'm going live tonight at 8 o'clock on Friday. 
See you guys in an hour. By the way, we're going to talk about putting a load in the gondola. That's all you got to do. Bang, done. You did your own little commercial. So there's that part. If you know you want to do live streams a lot, Weber Model Railroads. G'day. You got Gaffa in here. Hi. So I haven't been looking at the chat for a bit, because, and I'm bad for that, or I'm good for that. I don't know. I like to look at the screen sometimes. So, but if you know you're going to be doing live streams and you want to start doing them on a regular basis, you can kind of set it up. Just don't pick Wednesday nights. Don't pick Friday nights, please. But, or any other night that somebody has theirs on. But yeah, plan it, schedule it. And if it goes really good for you, you can keep doing like, you don't have to be weekly like I am and Vinny. I will tell you guys, it is hard to go weekly. It's hard to find something to talk about. It's hard to plan it. It's hard to get things set up. And I even find it harder after the live stream is done. And I say goodbye to you guys. Now I've got this whole mess that I've created. I have to clean it up. So this is just something that to think about if you're going to start doing live streams. But you don't have to go weekly. Go every two weeks. You can go every first Tuesday of the month. You can go every last Thursday of the month. You can go once a month whenever you feel like it. You know what I mean? So, but whenever you do them, you always got to sit there and go, hey, I got something for Super Chat. So you guys can hit the Super Chat button and I can push this button and make noise. That's just me. So that's if you got Super Chats. But you get up there. Basements are good even in temperatures year-round. I do agree. So, or a shed that you can put a big air conditioner in and a heater. So, another thing that I'm thinking about when people are doing live streams is when the chat's going by so fast on this thing and you can't see it, you miss quite a bit of it, and not because you're not actually paying attention to the chat, just because you can't see it. So if you're doing a live stream and your chat is the main reason you're doing the live stream and you're missing it all, you're going to start having problems. Get yourself a cheap laptop. You can find them used for like 150 bucks, 100 bucks. I don't know. You can find a brand new one for a thousand bucks, whatever is up your alley. But I would suggest having a laptop to do your live streams with. I say laptop because it's easy enough. You can stream in your backyard. There's a laptop. You can go to your layout in the basement. There's your laptop. You can go to the attic and run trains, do a live stream. There's your laptop. Right? Carry it around with you. But the laptop, the biggest thing that I want mine for is when I get a chance, when I tell you guys, I'm reading the chat now. So now we're going to have a little talk. So that's more money than I got right now. You must be talking about laptops. So, but Nicholas, you do live streams, so you kind of get what I'm saying, what I notice with people. And I've seen you do it too, where you're looking at the screen and all of a sudden you got to get right in there. And look at the chat, or you're missing some of the chat, right? So this isn't do it or else. This is hints, tips, and tricks, I guess, is what you can kind of say. So uh, placement of your camera. Now, the best way to place your camera is not the way I do it, because my camera is right there. My computer that I'm doing my live stream with is over there. I can show you guys in a minute. And my laptop is over there. So... When I'm doing the live streams, I'm working here, trying to look at the camera, but in doing that, I can't see the chat. So the other hint I want to say to you guys is if you're doing a live stream and you know you're not going to be looking at the chat for a while, just say, guys, I'm not going to be looking at the chat, so have some fun. Let's have a talk or whatever else, but I'm going to be doing this project here. I will check out the chat in a bit or in the replay. Uh, what else do we have? Not watching the chat. Yeah, I just said that. Lighting is always a good thing. Mine right now is natural light through the window. But again, if you're doing it in the basement or the attic, try to make sure if your live stream is right here, this is what you're doing on this cup. Say, make sure it's well lit on the front. So the people, like, this is what the camera sees. So this is what the light has to be on. But don't make sure that the light is so bright, that it's so glaring, that now you can't see anything on the camera, including my beautiful face. Backgrounds, sounds, so, meaning 
exactly what happened to me just a little while ago. It happens every live stream. My phone rings. So if you got a phone that is loud, like I did, I turned mine down this time. Because I know it's got to be a solicitor or something. It's all the time in between 7 and 8 that this number calls. Even if you answer it, they don't care. They call again anyway. So turn down that. Turn down your TV. Make sure other people in your house know that you're doing the live stream. Uh, Amy does not like being on camera whatsoever. She actually gets very mad at me if she gets on camera, including somebody else's camera. So when I'm doing a live stream, when I first started doing them, I didn't tell her. And she'd come into the room, and I'd be like, or she'd look at the <laughs> Most of the time, she'd just look up at the screen and see her from here to here. And she's like, oh, gotta go. So just let everybody know that you're doing a live stream at the time. Post a sign on the door that says, I'm live. But yeah, so check your phones, taxes. Cell phones are the real bad thing, especially if you're using it for your live stream. Shut off the sound. It's just that easy. Just clicking a button, bang, done. Now, when some, somebody sends you a text, they don't hear the beep, 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 or whatever text sound you got. So that's all that. If you guys got any other tips, tips or tricks for doing live streams, like I said, there's a few people out there starting to do them. Redbird Tony is just did his first one today. I've seen about 20 minutes of it, and I kind of skipped through it. So I'll try to watch more later. But it looked really good to me for what I saw. So... And he said, just have something to drink. And, and Redbird Tony, he did. So had some sitting there. Uh, Nicholas, like I said, you do the live stream too. So maybe you got some tips and tricks for people. Good show. Thank you, John Dilly. Ready, guys? Torpedo. Oh, I'll turn it down. Thank you, John Dilly. Good show's all right. Wasn't the best show, but it's a good show. We're not quite over yet. So thank you very much. And like I said, guys, check out people that are in the stream. So John Billy's a good one. I like watching his stuff. So Gatha, Nicholas, Redbird, Tony. So you guys talk amongst yourselves for a bit. That was my hints, tips, and tricks on doing live streams. I love watching them when they're live. I like taking part of them. Scrumptious also does the live stream quite often. Uh, I'm sure there's other people that have missed just because I'm not really looking at the chat right now. So, But if you guys got more tips and tricks, throw them up there so people can uh, learn. That's what we're all here for is to A, subscribe to everybody, and B, we can all learn something. And if that's what you learned today, perfect. Now, the other part about the gondola that I was going to do, like I said, is going to be a live fitting of an aluminum load that I want to do. So let's see if I can do it. I'm definitely not going to be watching the chat anymore, so make fun of me if you want. Oh, the one thing I do want to say about chat, and I started laughing so hard last week because putting that uh, end of train device on the rail car. And you guys were taking bets. 20 bucks if I cut my finger and five bucks if I didn't. And just, I just started laughing so hard. You guys were doing all that. And literally, when I say I'm not watching the chat, very, I don't get to look at it very often because I'm affixuated on what I'm doing. I want to get it done for you guys, right? So anyway, thumbs up to you guys. That was awesome that you guys had a lot of fun with that. And uh, apparently I didn't win any of the, well, I, I won one bet. John Dilly, he gave me five bucks for not breaking anything or cutting myself. I forget which one it was, so. So, oh, I've been going an hour now, so we'll see. Hopefully, I don't rush this now. But I just, I have never done this. So I wanted to see, basically, how long it would take. So this is just going to be a rough give a go at it. I was say, I know I brought up a marker. Hey, you guys got to see the back of my shirt again. Cool. 
I don't know if I want to use a marker on a white rail car like that, and I'm going to put a big black streak down it. So there's hint number one, don't use a marker. So this is obviously the outside of the car. So I just kind of traced out. I want to make that smaller than that. That's fine. Okay, so we got this tool, which won't go that deep. So it will go in like that. Sort of. Hopefully it does a straight line. The only thing I don't like about this thing is you can't see the other side. This side looks straight. Oh yeah, that's not straight at all, but that's okay. That's the piece we need. That was the piece I needed, wasn't it? Okay, so that's the side of it. Like this. Okay, I got that now. All right, let's try this. It's not a very deep car. Yeah. That part. That's what we're going to fit in there. Mm -hmm. I love the sound this thing makes. At the end of it, when it's coming out of the styrofoam, you get that pop. Okay, how'd that turn out? And the other good thing about a wire cutter is it's not hot, so you can just put it down on the carpet. That's not bad. Okay, so I think I want that a little bit lower. Can you guys see what I was doing down there? No, you can't, eh? Sorry, movie now. That's what I get for not watching the chat. Hello, Ralph Greenwood. How are you doing? You got to set your uh, clock back an hour, I think. You're always an hour late. Or I'm an hour early, one of the two. Not sure. So I want a little bit off this yet. A little bit, not a lot. Yeah. So, you know, you guys will notice. Well, you guys can't see my head now, but now's the time. When I'm doing stuff like this, I actually have to look at that screen over there because it's actually showing me real time what I'm doing. And that's what, when I know something's in camera shot or not. So, so this isn't perfect, but I'm going to use it for now. Obviously, I try to make that a little bit wider so it fits in the car a little bit better. So, and yes, this stuff does smell a bit too. This is just like melting foam with a torch, only it's kind of controlled. So there is that. Now I'm gonna make a big, big mess with this. I know I am. Glue. That piece of paintbrush would be nice. That I can get to. That'll work. We got glue, we got a paintbrush. Go to the dollar store to get paintbrushes. That's exactly what you get is a dollar store paintbrush. I think they glue the ends of them together. So, okay, so there's that. We want the product on the top and a little bit on the sides. So, I want a piece of paper. Hopefully, not making too big of a mess then. We got maybe something. I'm black. You can still barely see that. I'm black. That's not what I meant. Anyway, that did not help you. So, okay. So I got this. Now the thing I like about the foam cutter is the bottom is smooth, so it'll fit in the bottom of the car. The top is all jagged. Now your loads are never going to be the same each time because obviously the foam cutter is not going to do that for you. So we got a little bit of glue on there, which is probably a lot of glue. I want to make sure this stuff sticks really good. Smear the glue all over it. 
Now, I have only seen videos twice on doing this, making loads for gondolas and stuff. And I've always wanted to try it. And I thought, what a better time to try it except on my live show, live chat. This way people get to see how easy or hard it kind of really is. So far, pretty easy. If you have one of those wire cutters. I'm just doing a little bit of glue on the sides, not a lot. And that's just so when I sprinkle on the aluminum, it's got somewhere else to stick. I guess I should do a little bit on the ends, but not really. I'll check that out later. Okay, so we got glue all over the front. And glue on the sides, you can kind of sort of see if I tip it where it gets wet and where it doesn't. And I got glue on my fingers, so I'm sure I'm going to look like a piece of aluminum junk shortly too. You know what I mean? Cheap brush, I got, you guys can't see it. Anyway, there's brush hairs all over that, so. And I'm really bad for wiping my fingers on my shirt. And I don't think I should do that in a shirt. So, enough said about that. Okay. Here comes the magic part. Huh. Actually turned out kind of cool. You guys can see it now. Looks like I'm yeah. So the glue's not dry yet, but there it is. Gondola car. And I made it a little bit smaller than the gondola, so it'll fit. There we go. The gondola with a scrap aluminum load. And what did that take us? Five minutes? I wasn't watching the chat. I wasn't watching the time either. So what do you think? Five minutes? Maybe 10 because I had to cut the foam, right? But if you actually take your time and do it, you can get it closer to the sides too, right? So and the other thing with that foam cutter is if you use two rulers, don't use metal ones. That's the first thing I'll tell you. But use a couple wooden rulers. On the side of it and just a couple elastic bands even will hold them straight and then that cutter will actually glide against that on both sides of that piece of foam so you put a ruler here and a ruler here right so it's even and then you'd run the cutter down the ruler down the side pushing into the ruler and that will make a straight cut for you and then you'll have a straight piece here and then you just got a zip done deal so, not bad. Not bad at all, as somebody else on YouTube would say. So, that's what I had for you tonight, guys. Hopefully, that was kind of cool. Ethan Bell, you still coming to Steamtown? I hope he is, because I just got done telling everybody he's going. So, take a minute, guys. I want to know how many subscribers you guys have. So, let me know right now. I have 1769. I lost two today. I don't know where they went. Just up and left me. I don't know. So, so Sparky107107 has 1,769 subscribers. So, if you're not subscribed to me and you've been watching this, well, you should hit subscribe. Or if you're watching this later, if you want to watch more Wednesday Night Live streams, hit subscribe, hit the bell, and I'll see you each time that you do it. So, and the wife's just getting home from the States. She was gone for five days, and she's just walking through the door now. So, not a bad time to stop the stream. So, what do we got here? We got John Dill. He's got 143. I'm going to move you guys up. Hello, how are you? GRE 2057 has 135. Indian Head Valley Railroad has 80. Ron Pisco away. He has 96. 96. Come on, guys. That's four away from 100. We can get them there. Weber Model Railroad has 527. Hastings BNSF N-Scaler Modeler has 75. 
Randy's Rock and Roll McCarter. Hey, everyone. Hello, sir. How are you? Track 10 train says 107. Barnabas Junction. I am sorry, sir. I didn't see you pop in. G'day, Jason. How are you doing? So if you've been here for a while, hopefully I did good. But Barnabas Junction has 1721. He's catching me. So if you're not subscribed to him, go check him out and let him pass me. Uh, I've missed a few, so hopefully you guys are seeing them better than I am. Jennifer White has 529. Really? That many? That's awesome. Steve Roberts has 195. We got David Atkins, 15 off of 300. Nice. 300 is a good number. I got some too. That's cool. Unsubs actually watch my vids more. Mine is really close, actually. I've got 57% of people that watch my content are not subscribed to my channel. So I don't get that. You know, just hit subscribe. Dang, done. I think, anyway. Track 10 trains, 108. Gatha Haynes has 26. I did unsub a few. You know, everybody's entitled to do something. So I actually did two this week, too. I unsubscribed to them. So the biggest thing is that, and I'm just going to throw this out there. I don't know what you guys are, are like. Dustin and Scale Railroad has eight. Eight subscribers, guys. There's 36 people watching. So let's get him up to 20. Hopefully he's got videos up, though. If he doesn't have any videos, well, it's up to you if you subscribe. So what was I saying? Somebody tell me what I was talking about. Sparky, yes, I'm entitled to something. Wonder what it is. Oh, yeah, that's what I was talking about, unsubscribing to people. So the one thing that's my biggest pet peeve with people's channels is I do model railroading, but I do subscribe to people that do rail fanning. But the rail fanning guys that go out and they do one-minute videos or three-minute videos, and they wait two weeks, and then they post 20 of them all at once. So you open up your YouTube channel, you go to your subscriptions, and you got 20 videos all from the same guy, and they all look the same because he's rail fanning in the same part of town, same spot, and the train all looks the same because the picture they use for the thumbnail is rail cars. So, yay, right? So the only hint I can give you to that, because I'm sure if it ticks me off, it ticks somebody else off, is if you're going to post a lot of videos, try to wait at least an hour between posting them. Now, YouTube, you can go on there, edit all your videos, put them up there, and then you can put them on a schedule, and they will post them for you. So you can post them for three days if you want, if you got that many videos. So, Okay, track 10 trains, 109 now. Nice. John Dilly Sparky, Ralph Greenwood did a $10 super chat a while ago. Mr. Ralph Greenwood, thank you very much, sir, and it's nice for you to pop in. <laughs> And I always like watching Ralph's champ. He gets his sitting at the table. He always cracks his bottle of wine. I'm pretty sure it's a bottle of wine. Sets it down. Puts, takes a drink, sets it down. And there it sits for the rest of the video. Drinking a thing. But he's so relaxed when he's doing his videos and talking. It's just so cool. And I'm pretty sure he's got a couple of really good videos coming out. Of, there's a rail line, right? You, you're doing a certain rail line and you were following it. So and you were going to be using Google Earth, I think, to follow it a little bit better. So again, Ralph Greenwood, check him out, guys. Awesome. And Mr. Ron Pisco will give you the torpedo. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Right. Single fan Zane. Single signal fan Zane. That's a ton twister. Japers. Hi, all changed my ch change channels. I did see you pop in there a little while ago, Zane. We got a room for July 13th to 15th. Let me know where you got the room so maybe we can get the same place. And does it overlook the tracks? 
Ethan Dale Bro 420. <laughs> And Ethanville Bro, Mr. Ethan, this one's for you, buddy. Happy sixth birthday. <laughs> Just because it was a six year old's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Go check that out. What he got for his birthday was awesome. <coughs> At least I thought it was awesome anyway. So thank you very much, guys. That was cool. Like I said, my wife just got home. So I'm pretty sure it's time for me to say goodnight to you guys and hello to her. Haven't seen her for five days. So should probably go do that. So I'm going to give you guys about five more minutes. So I'm going to watch the chat a little bit. Say hi to each other. Go check out each other's channels. If you want somebody to subscribe to them, now is a perfect time to say, come subscribe to me. I'm not watching. My moderators aren't watching either. So it's a free for all. Just don't swear. And I'll start cleaning this mess up a little bit. I think this looks really good. I, mean, I think it looks really good. That's kind of sweet. Let's see if I can get that a little bit closer for you guys. What do you think? Turns out. Yeah. I guess you never really see it from the end like this anyway, but I, yeah, I can do some more of those. Yeah. Of course, the glue wasn't dry when I put it in there, so now it's going to be glued to the side. That's with the nice toy. Sweet. I guess that's another way you can cut foam, too, is with a knife. But heaven forbid I ever do anything that's just kind of makes sense. I got to be like way out there in left field. So, another sneak peek at something I got coming up. All right. That's future, future. So, Steamtown, July 14th. Hope to see everybody there. Ethan, Bill, do you have my cell number or my email address? Let me know. And I can find a way to get it to you somehow. I think this brush is just going to be garbage, too. Dollar store brushes are just junk. Just saying. So I'm going to put that off to the side. Let it dry. Turn that way to put the brush over there. Turn that way to put the load over there. Yeah, why not? I am kind of silly some days. All right. And that did not touch anything in that cup. I got lots of that stuff left. Maybe I should start selling aluminum filings. So, oh yeah, if you guys weren't here before, one question I did ask, Vinny was doing... Vinny's selling his t-shirts. This is my t-shirt. I had a couple of people email me and say, hey, Sparky, can you, uh, are you selling your shirts and stuff? I was, I've never thought about selling my shirts. So there's the front. Uh, there's the back. Can you see the back? I gotta get up a little bit. Maybe a bit more. Oh, yeah. If you guys are interested in my shirts, let me know, and then I'll start looking at prices and uh, stuff like that. Other thing I'm going to suggest or say is if you're dealing with aluminum, 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 filings and glue, well, I don't know, use gloves. Because this stuff's going to give me a sliver. I can see that coming too, and it's stuck to me. So that's going to take me a bit to get off my fingers. Yeah, use gloves. Be smart. Be smart, be safe. Should be the same for today anyway. It is July 4th. So, whatever you guys are doing for tonight, go and enjoy it. Thanks for stopping in and checking out my stream. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Little caboose hobbies ground throw that I did. Hopefully somebody had the answer up there of how to get that bar 
to stay in there and not fall out. So if you got any tips and tricks on how to do that with this thing, let me know because I have no clue. Other than that, guys, have a terrific July 4th. And we'll talk to you later on. Just take it easy. Don't drink and drive. I hear it's bad for your health. And your pocketbook. And your license. Talk to you later, guys. Bye for now.